Hello everyone, this is Life Questions, a program designed to provide solutions to the many complicated questions about life from a biblical perspective. And I'm your host, Bill Harris. Without a doubt, we live in a very complex world. Many of this nation's traditional values are being challenged these days. A lot of the things that were once held sacred are now up for grabs. Ours is a rapidly changing world, and in some cases, the differences between right and wrong have become blurred. Well, we have invited a panel of local ministers to help bring biblical perspective to the many challenging questions that you, our viewers, have sent us, and I want you to meet them. First, there's Pastor Tim Smith from St. Mary's Church of the Nazarene, followed by Pastor Kelly Waltz, the church at Allentown, and then there's Jeff Kimberly, who is pastor of Neapolis Church of Christ. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Bill Mackey of the Zion Lutheran in St. Mary's. We're happy to have you all with us today. Happy to, happy be, to here. be here. Yeah, glad you could be here. Now, as I, as I mentioned, you know, we're in, we're in quite, a, quite a situation in this world today <laughs> with so much to address. And I'm sure that some of these questions I'm going to be presenting to you, you probably deal with in your local uh, communities as well. Okay. I'd like to start by reading this one question that came in that, that I think will help set the pace. This lady writes, my sister-in-law says she's an atheist, but uh, she is familiar with the Bible. She asked me why Jesus would allow the thief on the cross into heaven. Now, in her opinion, it doesn't seem fair for someone to live a terrible life and then at the last minute repent and go to heaven. Do you have any advice on how I can explain this to her? What, what would you say there? What are your thoughts on that? That's, that's a good question. Yeah, it's it is a good, good question. question. Yeah. Well, well, my first thought was, well, uh, if the problem is that he repented at the last minute, how, how far before you die do you have to repent for it to count? Ah, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no good answer to that. And the, the point is that it happens during this lifetime. And uh, it's, no, it's not fair. Um, there's nothing fair about it. But grace, the only, the only thing that makes forgiveness fair is that it's available to all of us on the same basis, yeah. on the basis of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, we have up to our last final breath on this earth to make that confession. doesn't matter if we make it at, our, you know, at 10 or at 90 at our last breath. Grace is still given to all of us. So does this show, Pastor Watts, then that, that God's ways of doing things are not always aligned with our limited, finite views? Because our views are, are caught up here and influenced by the world. And, uh, you know, she states that her sister-in-law thinks that it's unfair. Then are we um, making judgments where we should not be making judgments? Mm -hmm. Because in God's view, God created all of us. We're all of his children. He extends the same grace to each and every person but it's a choice that we have. Mm -hmm. And he does it out of love for us because we were created to be in relationship with him. But Adam and Eve, Adam opened that door for sin to come into the world mm -hmm. and God cannot be part of sin whatsoever. But he sent his son Jesus to provide a way for us. And he didn't say, okay, those that have only sinned a little bit, this option's for you. If your sins are really bad, no, this is not an option. It's an option. It's a gift that's extended to everybody. And it's hard for us to understand because I know when I've been hurt by people or get upset, well, I don't know if I want to forgive them. What they did was really bad to me. And we start putting judgments on different things based on experiences we've had. But we have to remember who God is. God is father to all of his creation, and he loves us all the same. I'm grateful that uh, Jesus forgave the thief on the cross, um, whether it was last minute or not, um, because I know that, you know, there's going to be hope for me. Uh, when we look at fairness, we tend to view fairness from our own perspective, but it, it's God's justice, not ours. And uh, one single sin separates us mm -hmm. from God. 
um, has any, have any of us not had one sin, you know? So, I mean, I'm grateful that um, I can be forgiven now and I can be forgiven right up to the end. So uh, I'm grateful that God shows that grace that this person who repented at the end is going to be in heaven and will hopefully greet me on a day when I go. Yeah. Certainly seems like God has a different time clock that he operates with than right. ours. The other thing I found encouraging states that the sister-in-law is an atheist, but yet has a problem with, <laughs> and why would you have a problem with if you don't believe in mm. something? So maybe so, she's not as much an atheist as she thinks. So, you know, they should find that promising that there is something there. Mm -hmm. There's at least a little bit of a seed. Mm -hmm. So you can work with that little bit of a seed and, and grow from there, you know. It, 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 you don't have to have a finite view, you know, a, a certain view of God to, to accept his grace. It's open for all of us. You, you just need to have just a little bit and then watch it grow. I guess it, it's, it's the grace that some people are having trouble with. Mm. Mm -hmm. Grace as opposed to judgment. My, my, my bishop has got a book out on grace and judgment and I'm reading it right now. And it seems like when it comes to others, we're so quickly, we so quickly move to judge. Mm -hmm. um, but when it's us that needs the mercy, <laughs> we want that grace and mercy. Yeah. Right, well see, and, and the very <clears throat> definition of grace is that it, it comes to those who don't deserve it. Yes. yes. Right. Okay, and, and, and so there's the rub. Um, uh, we get upset that people uh, might receive grace because they don't deserve it. Well, that's exactly who should receive grace, the ones who don't deserve it. So, I'm reminded Same of, argument can be made for us. We didn't deserve it either. Exactly. Right. In Matthew 20, Jesus tells the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Some start first thing in the morning. Right. Some start at 9 a.m., some start at noon. Yeah. And then in the last, last hour of the day, and then when they all come to get paid, they all get paid the same. And the ones that worked all day are going, that's just not fair. Are you, are you upset because I'm generous? Well, that's what's happening with this story. Yeah. Jesus was generous and gracious, and I'm glad. <laughs> so now we see that not only does God have a different time clock, <clears throat> But even this time clock for work and checking in and checking out is different. Right, absolutely. <laughs> yes, that is good. That is a very good thing. Let's move on. Uh, next here, and here's one we can all identify with. I struggle with being quick to anger. This has been a problem as long as I can remember, and I want to change my responses. Isn't that nice that someone recognizes they have a problem and, in fact, want to change it? Right. It is. How do we, you know, the Bible says be angry and sin not. So how do we deal with anger management or getting away with anger or whatever you want to call it? You know, the, the Bible says not to let the sun go down on your anger. So if, if you take that idea of not letting the sun go down on your anger, then you have a very limited time to be angry, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and for us, it's hard because... You know, we want to be ang we, we want to hold on to that anger because if we're angry with them, then we don't then it gives us some sort of excuse to not <laughs> talk to them or, you know, be around them. Oh, I'm angry. I don't want to deal with them. But the Bible says don't let the sun go down in your anger. So and it says the other Bible says in James, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. Mm -hmm. So if you put those two together, then it really should shape how we deal with anger. Well, I think one of the things I would ask is why does is this person, why do you find yourself getting angry? Why does anybody get angry? Well, we get angry when um, we don't get our way. <laughs> <laughs> when, when something doesn't go the way I want it to, when somebody does something that uh, is, isn't what I want to happen. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm reminded of the uh, old question, well, do, do corpses ever get angry? <laughs> well, no. The answer is to die. <laughs> uh, Paul said, I die daily. Yes. And we have to die to ourselves and our own preferences, our wishes, our, our own plans. And when we can do that, it sure makes a big difference on our angry because we don't have to feel like we have to get our own way. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would add that um, in terms of, of uh, how one might be able to help overcome this, uh, really is not to discount the power of prayer in that you know, uh, asking for the Lord to help change your own heart and your own attitude. Um, 
Uh, sometimes people are angry at everybody else and they pray that God would change those other people. And the fact of the matter is, really, the common denominator in all of those angers is the person themselves. So God, God helped change my heart, yes. change my attitude, yes. and, and pray that consistently and, uh, and see what might happen. Okay. Here's another one that I thought interesting. How do I discern between God's leading and my own thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. seems, to, seems to be that um, our own biases can get in the way oh, yeah. sometimes of, uh, of God's leading or wanting to lead us. And, and we, how, how, how do we distinguish between those two? Well, with, um, when I talk to people anymore, it's about uh, if you want to know the will of God, then um, read the scriptures, okay? Uh, so that in reading the scriptures, you begin to know what it is that God's will is for you as a disciple of Jesus, as a, one who believes and has faith. And, and if what you believe you're being led to do is inconsistent with what it says in Scripture, then it's probably not the Lord who's telling you to do it. Um, uh, whereas if it is consistent, if, and if it's especially something that uh, is calling to challenge you to respond in a way you don't initially want to respond in, um, where you might have to show somebody grace who doesn't deserve it, um, then that is probably God prompting you or leading you to do that. Um, but I think uh, it needs to be consistent with scripture. You know, I think another way that you discern God's leading in your own thoughts is God leads you to places that you might be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. God's not going to lead you into a place that you're comfortable. He's going to want to stretch you and, and, and mold you more into to the way he is. So you're going to have to look for that. You're going to have to kind of sense that, that, okay, this is a little out of my comfort zone. This is God stretching me and pushing me and be okay with that, you know, mm -hmm. walk through that open door. And I think we need to remember that the key is uh, going to God, whether it's seeking his words, seeking out through prayer, because as our relationship gets strengthened with him, we're more in tune with the spirit that's within us because the spirit's not going to lead us down the wrong path. That's right. Absolutely. <clears throat> but we sometimes get confused, like you said, because we're not spending time in the word and we've got to spend time with the Lord in order to open up that communication and to recognize when the spirit and again, if the Spirit is telling us to do something that doesn't line up with God's Word, then mm -hmm. we know it's not the Spirit we're listening to. Amen to that. All right. Listen, let's take a break. And, and when we return, I'd like to deal with the issue of finding your purpose in life, your God-given purpose. I don't know about you, but I find that many Christians struggle with that very, very fundamental thing. And we'll take up that issue right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Alrighty, thank you for being with us, and uh, we're back. The question we want to take up now, we, and um, I hear this even in church settings, not only with questions that come in, how do I determine my God-given purpose? Why am I here? Why did God bring me into this world? And, and when you as leaders develop an understanding of that, how do you turn that into the principles for leadership? You know, you all look like you're in really deep <laughs> thought now. <laughs> but I think people might be on the verge of sitting on the edge of their seats waiting to hear this, no, okay. this no. kind of an answer. Not to put any pressure on you, of oh, course. Okay. <laughs> I think all of us start out initially with um, uh, a Christ-commanded uh, purpose. Yeah. Uh, you know, go and make disciples. Uh, and um, in addition to that, then for, for those who um, perhaps go into the clergy, then to baptize and things like that, but, um, but to go and make disciples, to, 
to be the living stone that testifies uh, to uh, Jesus mm -hmm. and uh, what he has done for us um, on the cross and through the empty tomb. And so pr primarily each one of us who believe uh, our purpose in life is, is is to share that information, to, to go and make disciples, um, to walk alongside people um, in faith uh, so that you're not just saying something and heading off, but to journey with them as they, as they start to grow in that faith and have questions about that faith and share then with them the, uh, the experiences you've had in faith that might encourage them or bolster them. So, I mean, I think I think initially we all have that particular um, responsibility or command for our purpose. Well, that may spin out then into other avenues of skills that the Lord has given us, or the Holy Spirit has given us as gifts. But I, I would say initially that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Who else wants to chime well, in on I, that? I would I, I certainly agree with that and uh, Christ likeness is likewise a uh, common goal for us. When it comes to individual purposes, um, there, there are a number of uh, ways to look at that. One is, uh, what are the gifts that God has given you? So mm -hmm. there are spiritual gifts inventories that can be taken, yes. uh, and that can be helpful. What are the talents, the, the skills that you have? Um, not that God doesn't sometimes call us to do beyond that, and make us uncomfortable, as, mm -hmm. as you said earlier. Um, but I think the, the, the skills and gifts that God has gifted us with are things He wants, to, wants, it, wants us to use for glorying, uh, glorifying His name. And in terms of how to use that in leadership, well, once you begin to develop those, you're res we're responsible for developing uh, and making the most of the gifts that we have been given. And then uh, to use those for leadership, we have to always be servant leaders. I heard. Uh, Pat and what does that mean? <clears throat> Good. Well, I heard Patrick Lencioni uh, say uh, not long ago that he hoped that the phrase "servant leadership" eventually would go out of style because there is no other kind. Uh -huh. uh, servant, <laughs> to be a servant is to put the needs of those you are leading ahead of your own, mm -hmm. and so which is what Jesus did, and of course the washing feet example yes, yes. Uh, that Jesus did. He put the needs of his disciples ahead of his own. So, so part of our purpose in in leadership is to uh, lead people to where they need to go by being their servant, by putting their needs ahead of our own. Excellent. You want to add to that, Pastor Wolves? I, was, I would agree with that, and um, for me, yeah, my gifts were not like in music, and I remember in college wanting to set fire to the music, or the piano and the music <laughs> class that I had to take, but it was in teaching, so I was a teacher for 30 years, and so I felt like I was a servant leader within my classroom, uh -huh. and that was how God had gifted me. It was still, for me, eventually, once I gave my life over to Christ, it was about sharing the good news, but sharing the good news in always wanting the best for my students and caring about mm -hmm. them. And so it's displaying love. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like being a leader for Jesus is sharing the love that I experienced from Him and continue to experience from Him is with others. And what happened for me, that shift in where God wanted me to go to be a leader, he loosened the roots for me as a teacher, and I lost my passion. Mm. And so where is my new passion? And he opened some doors, and it was a case of another leader seeing in me something that I did not see myself. Mm -hmm. And it was the nurturing of that person to bring me along to a point where I realized and saw what my new purpose was. Mm. And, 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 and to go along with what you said about purpose, you know, I just experienced two, almost two and a half years out of the ministry mm -hmm. um, from our last ministry to, to where we are now. You know, you, you think, oh, God's got this great purpose for me as a leader, I need to follow these, use these gifts. And but you get to a point of burnout sometimes and of just feeling like, okay, I need a break. So I took a break 
and I thought, well, I'm going to use my gifts and my talents in other areas. You know, I thought, oh, I'll become, I'll become a teacher or I'll do something that uses my gifts, which was great. But as I started to go down that path, there were roadblocks constantly. And God kept pushing me back to ministry. Mm-hmm. And it came to the point, I don't even remember sending my resume to the church I'm at now. They just called me up and said, hey, we, we got your resume. We want to talk to you. One thing led to another and I'm here. And it was all God saying, you are a leader. I have gifted you with these talents to preach and teach and to lead others to Christ. Why aren't you using them? Here's an opportunity. I want you to go use them. And, so you've got to you be... Just, you just came recently to this yes, area. Yes, yes. I've came only been here about two months. Area. Yes, two months I've been back uh, in <clears throat> northern Ohio. So uh, from South Carolina was where I was re- uh, previously. So and, and, and to kind of then underscore what we were talking about moving into ser- servant leadership and about, you know, leadership for our, our communities, for our states, for our nation. We want leaders who are actually servants, mm-hmm. leaders who put the needs of the people ahead of their own needs, you know, leaders who care, who love the people that they serve uh, and aren't in love, you know, with, uh, with money and power and those other things, but can recognize those items as being resources or tools to get things done for the people they love. You know, I, I go to a, a church in Southfield, Michigan called Word of Faith International Christian Center. And when people <clears throat> come to the altar and they get saved, right away we try to plug them in to what they can do to become active mm-hmm. and, until they find whatever ministry. There is, in the fivefold ministry, you know, there's the, the, the preaching, the, the teacher, and the, the apostle, and the pastor, and, like, and the gift of helps. Mm-hmm. Right. That helps is a very Large big, category. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, yes. because the church has so many needs. Right. It's a very broad brush that you use to... It, it is. Wouldn't you encourage people to, while they're looking for their niche or their calling, to plug into that particular aspect, at least meantime? Well, it, yes, exactly. I mean, uh, in congregations that I've been involved with, there have been tools um, where the, the members have filled out that indicate their interests yes. and skills. Yes. And so we have a know, brochure in our church on helps. Right. And, and yeah. so you can be somebody who, who makes the coffee and, and sets up for the, the cookies or makes the cookies. You can be a greeter. You can be, there's a lot of ways in which you can be active in ministry um, to, you know, so that the whole ministry is, is um, being done and not just part of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, we exactly. Have a lady in our church that has had major health issues and sometimes feels like she's not doing really anything but she's got the greatest card ministry going <laughs> yep sends out cards to different people and i don't even believe That's she truly nice. understands the impact she's having on yeah. people right. and i remember when my mom was in the hospital i had just started going to allentown and i was getting my mom was getting these cards when she was in the hospital from this Sharon. And I'm like, who is this Sharon? I didn't even know who she was. She didn't know my mom, but she faithfully, my mom became part of her ministry. And it was something she was able to do at home, make out cards, put them in the mail. And she was contributing and glorifying God and having such a huge impact. I know how excited my mom was when she received those cards. Sure. I've heard other people. And what she thinks and treats as just something small she does has a huge impact. Right. Some of the best leadership you can have is, is, is leadership behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What about, um, would you say that Bible study, the local Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study or whenever, might be another avenue of trying to determine what your God-given purpose is as you're being exposed more and more to the Word of God? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And in the course of that, um, uh, perhaps discovering uh, maybe what uh, what helps you might be able to do for that Bible study, whether you can uh, fill in um, if the the pastor can't be there or whether you, you know, can uh, assist with uh, handing things out that might need to be handed out or um, you know, just being able to uh, organize or be part of a small group from the Bible study that might meet and talk. 
I, one of the things I think uh, that would help a person find their purpose would be to, to ask yourself, what is it that you enjoy doing that everybody else thinks is a chore? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what yeah, God is calling you to yeah. do. And it's, it's like some people phrase it another way. What would you enjoy doing even if you never got paid for right. it? You know, yeah, exactly. Right? That tends to be your, your, your niche. And, mm -hmm. Well, somebody, you, you talked earlier about the gifts that you have and the skills that you have. Mm -hmm. A lot of times your purpose may be within the confines of those things as well. Mm -hmm. Those things that just come naturally for you to do. Mm -hmm. what, what is the importance of getting involved in the church uh, when you link that up with sustainability and keeping people in the faith versus those who are just sitting off to the uh, sidelines, as some people call them, bench warmers who are not doing anything. <laughs> connectedness. I, I think yeah. connectedness is really important um, uh, because when you connect with other people in the, the churches you're in, the, the congregations you're serving or are in, um, then other people are connected to you as well. And so they can see uh, when it is maybe that uh, you're having a rough time uh, to be able to offer you words of encouragement or to stand with you, whatever might be going on. And, and likewise, you might be able to do that for them. Um, and as a result, there's a, a closeness that develops um, between those who are connected um, and they're more likely then to want to see each other when they come to worship and catch up on what's going on in the past week and, and uh, continue to support and lift up one another on behalf of Christ mm -hmm. um, versus those who are off to the side who don't get connected and don't get involved with anything and might feel themselves then isolated, alone, that nobody likes them or cares about them, but you know, they never bothered to be connected mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And, and I wonder about, and we're running out of time, but maybe a quick answer on this. What about, the world calls it mentoring. Mm -hmm. In God's house, we call it uh, discipleship. Right. right. The, the importance of that. Can I get a quick answer on that? Only about 30 well, seconds to last. When, when you have uh, someone who is coming up who uh, is new to something, it's good to pair them with someone who has done that ministry before, who knows, knows the ropes and the ins and outs and, and can then can mentor and disciple them along the way. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. We would say it's all about discipling. It that, is, that, isn't that's it? That's the main yeah, thing. It surely is. Thank you very much. You know, if you enjoyed this panel today, we're certainly going to ask you to tune in, tune in again next week because they will be back as we continue <laughs> our discussion into other questions that you, the viewers, have sent us. So until next week, I'm Bill Harris. For our illustrious guests here, we want to thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.